I'm on the faculty at Westminster Choir College. I joined the faculty there 10 years ago now in 2001 as an adjunct professor of organ and I became full-time organ teacher there in 2005. Um, it's been a great pleasure to serve at that institution but in 2012 I'm going to join the full-time faculty at Rice University, the Shepherd School of Music in Houston, Texas. The organ at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine is easy to describe in glowing terms. It's really one of the great landmark organs of America. Um, a great accomplishment of G. Donald Harrison, who was synonymous with the Aeolian Skinner Company for years and years. The instrument is built to be awesome in a word. Uh, it can be awesome in the most grand and epic sense. It can also be awesome in the most shimmering and mysterious sense. Um, for music that's designed for a cathedral, uh, it really is unsurpassed in its ability to uh, have a grand and uh, unforgettable effect. We decided to put the Gigou Grand Corps Dialogue on this recording because it's a perfect vehicle for a dialogue uh, between the state trumpet, the uh, tuba mirabilis, and the entire rest of this instrument. And to hear them uh, responding to each other antiphonally, I think, is a really exciting effect. It is a thrill to be honored with the privilege of being able to record at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Um, I'm grateful for the fact that St. John has hired some very generous music directors, first in Bruce Neswick and now in Kent Tritle, who are willing to share this magnificent instrument with uh, a guy from New Jersey like me. This organ has a really comprehensive tonal palette and dynamic range as well. So in designing a program for um, a recording, it was important to consider how we could utilize those resources in uh, the most varied way possible. The inclusion of the few canzone and epilogue, which is uh, also titled Third Symphonic Canzone by Siegfried Karl Ehlert, is partly because of this organ's ability to achieve really wonderful lush effects and a smooth buildup of uh, registers and uh, dynamics. This is a piece that begins with organ solo and a, uh, a fugue on the credo. And uh, following this opening statement, things become much more tranquil and meditative. At the end of the piece, violin soloist enters, uh, once again playing this fugal theme on the credo. And then uh, a chorus, an angelic sounding chorus, uh, enters with their own proclamation of this credo, with words this time. I was able to uh, include this piece because I had uh, the help of a few good friends. Um, my wife, Lisa Shihoten, is a, a marvelous violinist, and so she was willing to play violin uh, for the Carg Alert. And since I teach at Westminster Choir College, I get to know all sorts of wonderful singers. And Carg Alert's request was for four women's voices in the final section of this piece. And so the four people who are singing are all graduate students presently at Westminster. Um, 
and uh, several of them actually majoring in, in choral conducting, but all singers and, uh, as you'll hear, uh, very beautiful. to record this piece with considerable distance between the singers, the violinist, the organist. And so uh, perched high in the loft was Paolo Bordignon, who's Associate Director of Music at St. Bartholomew's Church uh, here in New York City, and also a former classmate of mine from college days, who uh, conducted beautifully and um, led us through the finale to this piece. This organ was rebuilt just almost two years ago by the Quimby Pipe Organ Company from Warrensburg, Missouri. They've done just a beautiful job of renovating uh, this instrument after it was damaged in a fire just about a decade ago. And uh, the resident curator is uh, Douglas Hunt, who I've known for many years since I worked uh, down uh, downtown somewhat at St. Bartholomew's Church. Uh, Doug really has a specialty in the organs of Aeolian Skinner in particular, and he keeps this instrument in absolutely meticulous tune and condition. So I'm eternally grateful to him for his uh, efforts in preparing the instrument for this recording. And uh, once again, to the Cathedral of St. John the Divine for being so generous as to allow someone from outside of their community to savor the sounds of this instrument.